So let me first thank uh, Professor Isaac that uh, has been sharing his views for the future of quantum technologies with me and, and I've learned a lot. And I cannot help thinking that all this wonderful conference would not be possible if it were not for the fathers of quantum mechanics. It's uh, in the 20s that we got the postulates, it's in the Every PhD thesis by, directed by Niels Bohr is a branch of physics, no? a solid state, for instance. And then we had all the issues on, on um, semiconductors and transistors. The communication is done with uh, lasers. And uh, even now, you will probably be using uh, quantum random number generators, even in the classical cryptography. So this is why this is so appealing, no? because now we are reaching the point where humans now control atoms individually, ions individually, photons individually, we can manipulate, we dominate matter at the level of individual particles, and that's really amazing. Okay? So let me uh, tell you a news that you already know, which is that quantum computers are here. Uh, of course, they are not full-fledged universal quantum computers. But we do have uh, quantum computers that are being used already to analyze how problems related to economy could be uh, mapped into the works of a quantum computer. Of course, there is, no, uh, there is no quantum advantage. Let me make this counting. If you have never done it, it uh, you know, every time you have a qubit, you multiply by two the number of real numbers, you have complex numbers that you have to use on the classical computer just to represent the state on the quantum computer, you multiply 250 times, 2 to the 50 is around 300 terabytes. So that's why many people call quantum supremacy to a full control uh, quantum computer of more than 50 qubits. The news is that yesterday on a different conference in the States, uh, Google started to announce the new machine, which is 54 qubits. You may know that uh, they jumped last year to 72, but it failed. They could not connect the machine. They went back, and now they are trying these 54 qubits. 54 is really impressive. Let me say another thing. These 54, imagine you try to do it with a supercomputer. You want to handle that with a supercomputer. I, I'm in Barcelona, and we have this Mare Nostrum machine, which is amazing. It's uh, the second computer now in Europe. Well, this machine is now using uh, 1.5 million euros per year on energy. The next machine that will be running in 2021 will be 20 times faster, but simply by multiplication, of course. So that means that the, we have to build a power station next to the computer. So just the bill of energy is amazing. So if not for anything else, quantum computers will be used because they are more efficient. And also they can handle larger problems. So it's speed, it's memory, and it is energy. Three possible advantages. Although everybody is focusing on speed. I don't know why. Okay, very likely it's energy. You know, the CERN is using superconducting currents for energy. Not that the magnetic field is better or worse, simply energetically better. So let me go ahead. This is the new Moore's laws. Eh? We already have the first graphs. And this is not the standard thing that you will see, which is how many qubits are being uh, deployed, but rather the error, how the error is scaling down dramatically. So that the computers are better and better. Uh, of course, you may see that there are very many colors because we don't know what is the winning technology. People are trying trap ions. People are trying superconducting qubits. People in solid stage claim that in the long term, they will be the winners. So one should keep an eye on everything. So that is a question. We have a quantum computer. OK, we run Shor's algorithm. OK, we break classical crypto. Then what do we do? We run post-quantum crypto, okay? Or quantum crypto, and then what, what do we do with a quantum computer? What, what else can we do with a quantum computer besides Shor's algorithm? And this is what I wanted to tell you today. My take on this question, which I think is very relevant, if you want to invest money 
you should know why you're investing money. My take is that we will very likely in the short term be running what are called hybrid variational quantum algorithms. So just for you to see the landscape of algorithms, you can classify them in three categories. One is the one you have been discussing, we have been discussing here all the afternoon. This is the, typically the Shore algorithm, uh, the Grover algorithm. Those are algorithms where we know everything about the algorithm. We know every gate where it should be done and, and with perfect accuracy. We, you also heard about annealing. This is like an analog quantum computer. Okay? What I will tell you about is the third category that I call variational quantum computers. Here, I will only talk about variational. So let me just here mention a few things about the, the Shore algorithm. I listened to the talks, okay, and I, I would like to bring a, a word of caution, okay, uh, about post quantum cryptography. Uh, the word is the following you know, uh, Shore's algorithm works because factorization. Okay, can be mapped efficiently to another problem, which is finding the period of a function. And it is the period of a function that the quantum Fourier transform solves in an efficient way. Now, why this is so? Why factoring has a hidden uh, group? Well, we don't know. The question is that, in a way, multiplying is easy, factoring is difficult in the classical world. Now, if you substitute these RSA by a new algorithm, supposedly quantum resistant, you have to be very careful that there is no mapping of that problem to another problem where there is a structure waiting for you and to be exploited by your quantum computer. So it may happen that all the categories of problems which are easy in a way and difficult in the other may form a category that we don't know. And as a proof for that, you may know that Shaw published a paper claiming he had broken the lattice, one of the lattice encryption um, schemes. There was a f it was faulty, the paper. There was a mistake in equation 175, no? So, but that means that as soon as the community agrees on an algorithm which is quantum resistant, you will have zillions of mathematicians attacking it immediately, mapping to different ways, see if there is any for advantage like the quantum Fourier transform. So you, one should have this uh, uh, always in his head because I think that in this sense, the good bet is really quantum cryptography, okay, in my opinion. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this variational. So what I'm claiming is that realistic quantum algorithms in the near intermediate, uh, noisy intermediate uh, scale uh, quantum era will be working on these uh, kind of algorithms. So what is the main idea? One transparency. Learn from artificial intelligence. So we have learned a lot. Okay, we have learned about supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, all the very variants of Q-learning. So why don't we do the very same thing with a quantum device? So this is the idea. So let me get it through. You know, imagine that uh, Arthur has a quantum computer in Singapore, okay, and I'm writing a, my code in Barcelona. So I simply call him on a classical phone, and I say, please, Arthur, run uh, gate U1 on qubit 1 and 2. In parallel, run U2 in qubit 3 and 4, and so on. So what I do is I have a classical characterization of a quantum circuit. I can enunciate the quantum circuit in a classical way, and I send that there. So why don't you take that characterization, this alpha characterization, and now forget this is a quantum computer and think that it will deliver probabilities in the variant. So can I explore a vast space of probabilities with this machine? I don't care whether there are control knots, there are rotations, I don't care what is going on inside the quantum computer. I know there is a classical characterization of the quantum computer. So the question is very simple. Is there a secret, which I don't know a priori, that will take me near the solution I'm looking for? Well, 
That's a question. It may be that the space of probability is so large that this is not the case. So it may be mathematically impossible. But definitely, now I think of these alpha parameters that characterize a secret as a, a place where I can play with machine learning. Because I simply know that I have to find the solution. For instance, the min minimum energy for a molecule. So if I get a better result, who cares what was inside the quantum computer? So the idea is forget about the precision of gates and think now on a variational ansatz in this enormous space. That ansatz could not be analyzed so efficiently with a classical computer, but you can do it with a quantum computer. So it's like a humble step back and say, well, maybe we do not control fully every gate in the quantum computer, but we have a machine. So we have a machine, which is quantum, which is analyzing the Hilbert space. So can we use it? Well, let's try to use it variationally. Look at the advantage. Now I don't really care that the gates are perfect. I don't need error correction for that. The gates are not OK. I will try to find a different combination of my gates, which is better. Okay? I don't need to have a perfect control knot. Okay? This is not the case. So this is indeed the idea. And let me tell you that there is a piece of good news, that there is uh, this fantastic uh, scientist called Kitayev, uh, and a mathematician, Solovay, and there is a theorem. So imagine V is the quantum circuit that would solve your problem. The question is whether, given a set of gates, which is the dense, that can approximate formally every, every other uh, unitary, is there a combination of them that approaches V? And if so, how long is a secret? What is the depth of the secret? Well, the theorem says that given a problem, fix the number of qubits, the accuracy can be increased exponentially fast. Okay? So I can find a secret that f by adding a polynomial number of gates, I will get exponentially closer to the solution. So this is a piece of good news. And here comes what happened uh, a few years ago. You may have read the news. This was by IBM and other people. And it was run on the IBM computer. The, the basic idea was exactly what I said. Take a quantum circuit that you don't understand, but play with the parameters of the gate and check whether the solution is the minimum energy of the Hamiltonian of a molecule, of a quantum chemistry molecule. If not, you come back and you change your secret. So you use a quantum machine to explore the space of configurations of the quantum molecule. And by doing this cycle repeatedly, I'm building a hybrid classical quantum computer. I'm using a piece of the computer which is classical, which is simply calling a quantum processing unit. So instead of having a, a GPU, now you have a QPU. Whenever you need a difficult computation, you call the quantum processing unit. But the control of the algorithm is taken by the classical machine, by the machine learning piece of the secret. And this was the first steps to, you may have seen this. I mean, this was the way, the first computation of, oh, really, of hydrogen, of beryllium, of lithium, of a few of the molecules. And it has also been said, what are the, the uses of that? And it was mentioned that quantum chemistry is one of them. And it is often mentioned that one of the relevant problems that could be solved with a, a small computer would be nit nitrogen fixation. And this is related to fertilizers. So there, it is claimed that with 300 qubits, you may have a decent approach that would be uh, much stronger than any classical computer. Okay, so I think I will simply jump everything. Uh, let me just tell you that there is plenty of work for everybody because we don't really know how to encode data, how to process. So how we, we put the data on the classical computer, how we make this characterization in an efficient way, and how we read out. There are plenty of theorems there that people are trying to build. So this is really an emerging field. So let me jump ahead, okay? Uh, uh, well, we are building classifiers. 
So you see, we can do all these things variationally. We can add, we can do a classifier. This is an example of a classifier that with only six hidden units, quantum units, six gates, can classify better than a hundred uh, neural, uh, neural network with a hundred uh, neurons in the hidden unit. Uh, so my final comment uh, is whether a piece of the community should, obviously the big teams are focusing on the universal quantum computer, so whether it makes sense to build an intermediate computer, which is, uh, you know, uh, a practical one. So let me call it a variational quantum computer. Really address this idea and push it strongly. Of course, this is not a device that would factor, I think, but it would be useful. Could we even jump ahead and work right away on the pulses that we send to the machine? Could we delegate all the action on the classical, on the quantum computer, every action which is physical at the classical level? And this is a very sensible thing to do. Okay? Um, let me add one, my final closing remark is that people all the time keep asking when these things are happening. No? Of course, now we have a better answer. No? Uh, Google has 54 qubits. But really, in my opinion, this is not when. The real issue is who is doing that. Let me tell you something. If you have a quantum computer which is useful, you will not share it. You will not. Okay? It will be proprietary. So countries like Israel, like, like Europe in general, I think we should develop everything. Okay? We, nobody will share it with us. Uh, that's why we have started this effort of uh, building a, a quantum computer which is variational and associated to the supercomputing center in Barcelona because we think that in the, well actually the HPC initiative, High Performance Computing Initiative, has a roadmap where they merge supercomputing technology with quantum computation by 2025. This is written in the roadmap of the European Union. And, uh, Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Please just stand by the microphone. Not very good. Well, that, that's a big issue. The way you relate to the, to the quantum machine has to be changed. The way now you relate to it is that you can only place a control knot. Let me give you the example. You, you have a control knot and next to it you have a rotation. Well, why do you need a control knot if next you're doing a rotation? So leave me, give me the pulses that would do anything. And by so, I bypass many... Uh, cycles of the uh, many detailed operations that in my machine to control the quantum machine. So it's a simpler control that I need. I don't need that you work that hard on that piece. I give you an example, an annealer, not a quantum computer. Well, give me access to every the detail of every way I can move in time the relative terms in the Hamiltonian. That would be adapting to this kind of philosophy, to a variation of philosophy. Don't give me an annealer. Give me a very detailed control on the pulses of every action. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, look, I've been discussing with IBM for two years, and they never, they claim that they will give this access, but it never happened. And, yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, any other questions? All right, uh, let me ask a question about sure. um, there's the hybrid approach of not going for a big, fat, universal quantum computer, but working with several small processors interlinked with the classical processor. What do you think about that? No, approach? but uh, I mean, this is like the, the classical computer getting it bigger and bigger. I, I'm this is slightly critical with all these, minor, you know, in Barcelona, we, we got one of these three new computers that will come in 2021. It's 100 million euros from the European Union and 100 million that we have to put in Spain. So it's 200 million. 
yet the processing units are 2 gigahertz. So you cannot do anything faster there. So if your problem can be parallelized, it's fantastic, but you need intensity. If you break a quantum problem in two quantum problems, you are not addressing the molecule of 300. You are, you are addressing a smaller one. So you, you are missing, well, I think. You cannot factor, for instance, a big number. So in this sense, I, I don't quite understand. Okay? Okay. There are other things you can do if you have interconnected quantum computers. But that particular, thinking that it is more powerful per se, it's not, certainly not true. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.